Hello and welcome to day 30 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the study that uh, I've done for you today is by Georgia Ness and it's called The Pond. It's a nice little um, painting and uh, I really enjoyed uh, doing it. Uh, today I've been uh, in the process of uh, looking up and researching uh, some information for today's uh, video uh, narration, um, I thought it'd be interesting to put the word Georgian S technique into the Google search uh, because uh, uh, how we actually painted is a little bit of a mystery, but uh, I found a pretty good site and I put a link to it in the blog post, but I'm going to read you a little bit about, uh, here's a quote from Georgian S. Um, the purpose of the painter is simply to reproduce in other minds the impression which is seen is made upon him. A work of art does not appeal to the intellect. It does not appeal to the moral sense. Its aim is not to instruct, not to edify, but to awaken an emotion. Now, this is a, you know, a, a, a pretty good goal to go after with painting because it's one of the things that painting excels at. Uh, here's a bit of biographical information. Uh, Georgian S received no formal education in art, but traveled many times to Europe. That's actually not true. He did train with a painter as a young man. I don't know the name of that guy offhand, but he did have some training. Uh, so maybe we'll skip this whole bio since it started off wrong. Um, here's an interesting description here of tonalism, though. American tonalism is rooted in the French Barbizon movement, which emphasized atmosphere and shadow. The tonalist style employs a distinctive technique by use of colors middle values as opposed to stronger contrasts and high chroma, resulting in an understated and compelling overall effect. The tonal subject matter is never entirely apparent, nor their effort is there is no effort to communicate a message or narrate a story. Instead of relating a story, each sensitively chosen color, composition, and line is arranged to create an intriguing visual poem. The interiors of Tonalist paintings are generally elegant and sparsely decorated, tonally uniform, simplified, and indistinct. The figures are usually presented alone in silent, silent contemplation. Landscapes are typically luscious and luminous with evocative atmospheric effects featuring misty backgrounds illuminated by moonlight. Tonalist painters were drawn to both the natural and spiritual realms. They sought to awaken in viewers' consciousness. They sought to awaken the viewer's consciousness by shrouding the subject in misty, indistinct veil of emotionalism. The palette is minimal, characterized by warm hues of browns, soft greens, gauzy yellows, and muted grays. Preferred themes were evocative moonlit nights and poetic vaporous landscapes. Toneless painters seem to favor unconscious states and psychological experiences over reality. So, and that's, uh, there's a bit more in that link there about George Ness. And I wrote a bit about uh, what little insight I was able to glean into his actual technique. Um, as I did mention in the blog posts, or maybe I did, uh, he was famous for painting over his own paintings many, many times, sometimes up to 24 or 30 times, just kept painting a different scene over a previous. And I think one of the reasons for this is you get a certain very imaginative and magical effect when you paint over an existing painting that uh, it doesn't happen that way when you're just painting painting straight up. Um, I've done a little bit of this, but I can't say I'm addicted to it like uh, George Ness was. Um, of course, uh, another one of his major techniques was to do employ glazing of uh, browns or blacks or even yellows over the top of uh, an existing painting that it dried to uh, enhance the chroma and uh, overall effect. Um, anyway, uh, I see we're getting close to the end of the video, so um, thanks for joining me for day 30 of 100 Days of Tonalism, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for day 31. Um, this has been M. Francis McCarthy, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Meanwhile, Stay out of trouble and take good care.